Jovi aus Berlin. My name is Matthias Willich and today I'll talk to you about how to revise a scientific paper after review. So I'm going to divide this into some practical points that I'll talk about first and then I'll speak more about the general attitude and the style. So the practical points first. First of all, you should go about starting this review by having three documents ready. That is absolutely essential. The first document is your original submission. You need that because the line numbers uh, in the reviewer comments will refer to that. And as you change your manuscript, as you revise it, the line numbers will shift and then you don't know what's what anymore. The second document is your revised document. This is where you make your changes. And it's very important that you track the changes, either with the track changes function in Word or whatever word processor you use, or with the color, because um, many journals require that. And the third document is the very essential point-by-point -point response to reviewer comments, which is actually what we are mostly going to be talking about in this session here. And the point-by-point -point response to reviewer comments you create by simply copying and pasting all of the reviewer comments, including the editor comments, into a new Word doc. And then you insert, after every one of these points, your response. So one really important practical point is, this is a document that, first of all, your editor will see. So whatever you can do to make it easier for them to assess right away what's been going on, is you should not just say, well, we've changed the introduction to uh, respond to that reviewer comment. You should say that, but then you should also underneath quote uh, what you have actually changed. For example, by quoting the text from your revised manuscript and then underlining the text pieces that you have altered in the revision. And the point is that without even referring to the revised manuscript itself, the editor who then sees your manuscript, he or she can immediately decide what you have done and if it's sufficient without even opening up that other document ideally. So make it as easy as possible for the editor to see what exactly you have changed. One way of doing it as another practical tip is use color or font types or indents or italics or whatever um, you find useful to clearly distinguish what is the quote of the reviewer that you're responding to, what is your response in the point-by-point -point response letter, and what is actually the change in the manuscript that you're quoting, for example, by putting that in quotation marks, and then exactly what has been altered, maybe by underlining it. So make it visually very clear by the use of color and font types and quotation marks and underlines or whatever uh, in a consistent fashion throughout the entire point-by-point -point response where all the different bits belong to. Is it a reviewer comment? Is it your response? Or is it a text quote? Because nothing is more frustrating than having that all be a soup and you have to sort of sift through, figure out what's what. Another important point uh, is at this point, at the point-by-point -point response and revising a manuscript do not change any things in the manuscript unless they were requested by a reviewer. Why is that important? Well, if you start changing other things now in the manuscript, you create the impression that your manuscript wasn't really a finished product at the time you submitted it. And that creates a very bad impression. You should avoid doing that at all cost. So whatever you do now, unless you fix a serious error that you only now have discovered, Whatever you do from now on, you only do it in response, direct response to a reviewer comment and nothing else. And the two final practical points are, of course, respond to every one of the reviewer comments, if possible, separately. It might be practical to lump some of those together and then respond to them summar summarily. But of course, do not let any reviewer comments out because you find them weird or uh, you don't know how to respond to them. That's not possible. And also, of course, before you actually submit your revision, make sure that all your co-authors have also approved the point-by-point -point response and the revisions to the manuscript, just like what you did when you submitted the manuscript in the first place. You need everybody's consent. Now, the second bit of this is about the attitude and the style to use in this point-by-point -point response. And remember, this is the editor seeing this response, first of all. But then, of course, if it gets sent out for re-review, it will be seen also by the reviewers. And that's important to keep in mind. So the first bit is uh, the mindset that you should take uh, is how can I use these comments 
in any possible way to improve the manuscript. That's central. How can I use these comments to improve the manuscript? Think about that always as you go through all of the responses and all of the reviewer comments. That also means respond in a non-emotional way to reviewer, reviewer comments, even though you may be aggravated by them, you may find that they are unprofessional, that they're stupid or whatever. Um, don't go to that level. Respond to them in a very non-emotional, matter-of-factly way. Um, do not show that you are flustered by reviewer comments. Uh, stay completely professional about them. Um, otherwise, it reflects very badly on you. And by no means should you criticize that reviewer or question their qualification to review that paper. That's completely unproductive because um, they're going to see that uh, basically that, that comment and that would make nobody feel good about themselves and might induce a negative reaction. There's always other ways to phrase that. You know, maybe ah, perhaps we didn't make that quite clear and then maybe you add just another layer of explanation in your manuscript. But under, under, under no circumstances should you, should you criticize the reviewer. That's just completely unproductive. Also, it may mean that the reviewer didn't have exactly the expertise that's relevant for your paper. And that is actually maybe not so bad because if that reviewer didn't get a point, then maybe it means that you could increase the accessibility of your paper by just adding another little layer of explanation. So take it as a chance also to improve the accessibility of your paper, even if you get some slightly off-target reviewer comments, as hard as it sometimes can be. Another thing that I would not recommend is you have a reviewer comment and you write as, the, uh, as your response a very long piece of text, but then you change nothing in the manuscript. I mean, if you, took, if you took it that long to explain something, it seems something wasn't quite clear in the manuscript, and then it seems incongruent that you haven't really changed anything in the manuscript itself. So make sure that there is a good ratio between the text that you write in that response and the text, uh, some alteration that you actually make in the revision itself. Another general point is, at this point, don't be stubborn, <laughs> unless it's really important to the paper, of course. Um, don't be stubborn about some point. Try to see the, um, the mindset of the reviewer. Sometimes it just takes, even take a little, taking a day and just thinking it through again. And occasionally it's even become clear to me, it's like, ah, this is what the reviewer actually meant. It wasn't what I thought they meant in the first place. So don't be stubborn about it. Try to see it from their vantage point and uh, then respond to that comment. At the same time, don't be overly apologetic. You know, this is a professional exchange. There is, there is no place for, you know, oh, we're terribly sorry, blah, blah, blah. You know, I mean, you respond to um, a comment by a reviewer in a matter-of-factly way. And you will say, we are very grateful for bringing this to our attention. We fixed it. Don't be apologetic. And also don't sell out all your beliefs at this point. Um, but don't be stubborn. If you really do not agree with a reviewer comment, and this happens very regularly, then you need to be very careful about explaining why you do not agree, of course. Citing additional paper, citing additional evidence, um, revising text to make more clear what you actually meant. Um, and it's clear that if you agree with a reviewer comment, there's not much you need to explain. But if you do not agree, keep it in mind, the editor and that reviewer will likely see your response make very clear why you think uh, what you actually did in the first place was correct. That is essential. And something that I would also recommend very strongly is thank the reviewer. Thank the reviewer in, in a general way in, in the beginning because they took out of time out of the busy day to um, read your manuscript. It is a lot of work. Some reviewers do in amazing job um, analyzing and critiquing your paper and I think you should thank them for it and I also make a point of thanking them for, for particularly useful comments they have made along the way. It's just the, it seems like the right thing to do. Uh, you, you don't communicate with them in person of course because it's uh, mostly anonymous but I think it is just very good style and shows your attitude that you 
actually appreciate the comment and that you see how it um, made your paper a better paper. So I think if you keep these practical tips um, in mind and then very importantly really live these um, style and attitude recommendations, I think uh, your revision should be a successful one. Hi there! If you like this video, don't forget to click like down there and also remember to subscribe to the channel and feel free to leave comments. See ya!